yeah. 99% of relationships that I've had that haven't worked, I, I'm telling you right now, the relationships that haven't worked where it was my fault and I look back, because I only look at the stuff that I screwed up with, and I've screwed up many of them. You know what they all have in common? I did not manage expectations up front. It's my fault. Yep. I don't sit there and say what the other person. So eventually I'm like, yeah, this relationship didn't work out. Why? You didn't manage expectations. You were just so goo goo gaga over the fact, oh my gosh, she's so hot. You screwed up. So rather, here's where I stand. Is that good? If you like it, it's not going to change. This is where I stand with this. And it works out. That's what I think they do right. And by the way, that's how we were in the military. It was kind of like, look, I'm not looking for a wife. I'm not looking for this. But if you want to have a good time, no problem. Anything outside of that, I have no desire to get married while I'm in the Army. And the girl either said, no, I don't like that. Or she said, cool, I respect that. Great, then let's go. And if it's fun, we'll do it again. If it's not, this will be the last time. But it was all upfront managing that expectation. And so, how long have you been married now, Patrick? Twelve and a half years. But you know what I say? You know what I say about marriage? What do I say about marriage? Take the day I got you. married and I'm giving a speech at, in front of our wedding... I said, let me tell you something about marriage. I don't know whether we're going to be married for 50 years, but I do know we're going to be married for one year. We're going to take it one year at a time. Mm. I said this in front of 500 family members. I said, we're going to take this one year at a time. And none of you guys can create unnecessary pressures for us because I don't want to. I said, number two, at my wedding day, I said, do not ask my wife if she's pregnant. You're going to have a problem with me. Nobody can ask my wife if she's pregnant. There's a lot of extra pressures for having kids. You're not going to come to my wife saying you guys have kids or not. When we do, you'll find out about it. I want a lot of kids, but if it doesn't happen, it's none of your business. So I looked at both sides of the family. Don't ask my wife about kids, and don't ask us about you know all this other stuff. And then, you know, marriage, one year at a time. We've been married 12 and a half years. We're about to be 13 years. I think we can make it to 13. The reason why I say this is the following reason. Some people say, man, he's got an agenda. He's got this or he's got that. No. Uh, life changes. People change, situations change. I can't control the other person. I can control myself. I don't walk on water. I don't have the expectation of walking on water. My standard is not to be perfect. That standard of perfection ruins relationship. The standard of perfection ruins relationships. The standard of perfection rules friendship, all of that. So listen, here's where I am. I respect you. We're going to play the game. I love you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to be my best. But at the same time, stick it one year at a time. It's worked out well. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, uh, you, that's a very good point you made earlier. Um, the biggest thing for guys, especially, is that like, okay, this is who you are, right? Just the core foundation is make your money, focus on your mindset, your fitness. And as a result, you're becoming a better man. Guess what? If you're in the best position possible for yourself, like for example, I'm not Myron. Myron's not me. You see flashy jewelry, lifestyle. That's just me. That's how I roll, right? But guess what? Regarding women and, and dating, this is who I am. I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. I, I, I likewise, he's very upfront, very you know, masculine, very who he is. But guess what? That's who he is. So as a result, if you are who you are and you prove yourself as a guy, I'm telling you right now, that's all you need to do. You don't need to be me or my, just be yourself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, upgrade yourself mentally, physically, and also money-wise. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, this again. I thought there's gonna be a shit ton of things, but but yeah, look. everyone takes our clips and like, oh, I disagree with yeah. this. But then when you get the full context, it no, changes. No, what itself. you're saying is for men to be men. By the way, if you want options, increase your market value. You have to. Yeah, Simple like, as that. Like the days of just being able to like you know kind of have game or having like it used to be where you can have like do one thing like well and like do really well one. Yeah. But like nowadays, man, with the the pickiness of women, how the mar the dating marketplace has changed, women have more options than ever before. You really have to be a complete package if you want to be able to get the dating options that you want and on top of that, be able to retain girls, keep them in rotation, whatever. Because if you got, like, let's say you got game, right? But you don't got any money or you don't, uh, not the best looking guy, right? Um, you'll be able to get girls. You might get laid once or twice here, whatever it may be, but you're not going to be able to retain that girl long term. You're going to lose her to some dude that has his shit together, whatever it may be, that might have less game than you. Or let's say you're a very good looking guy. You might get laid every now and then, but you're not able to keep girls around or take them on dates, give them a good experience, and retention goes down. Or let's just say you have only money. Well, they're not going to respect you because you don't understand how to uh, cognitively stimulate her and get her to be aroused by you and actually genuinely attracted. She's dealing with you just as a means to an end because you have financial stability. So we tell guys you need to be, be the complete package. You need to be in shape. You need to have game. You need to understand female nature you need to um have your money on point so you can go ahead and be the most marketable to the largest demographic of girls there's some girls that only want good looking guys that are in shape cool now you're in shape there's some girls that only want guys that have money cool you can get them chicks as well there's some girls that want guys that you know have a, a talking mouth a talking a good talking game piece. cool so 
That way, you're the most marketable to the largest amount of women because we tell guys all the time, in today's da dating game, you got to work volume. you got to be talking to a lot of girls. And to be able to talk to the most girls and have the highest uh, potential of success, you have to have the most attributes that will make you attractive to the largest demographic of women. And having all these things in place not only will make you more attractive, make you happier as a man in general, but you're going to have an abundance mindset and you're not going to operate from a scarcity mindset. So many guys operate where it's like, oh my God, I hope she likes me. I hope she likes me. Let me try to impress her. I'm like, no, fuck that shit. It's not, I hope she likes me game. It's take it or fucking leave it game. Comply or goodbye. This is how I am. And when you have that abundance mindset, yeah. Even if the girl doesn't like you or she gets offended by it, she's going to respect you. And I tell guys all the time, a girl's respect is more important than her liking you. Because if she respects you, she's going to be like, okay, you know what? This guy isn't kissing my ass. This guy isn't all about it, uh, you know, putting me on a pedestal, whatever. This is different. This is the refreshing. Let me figure out what's going on here. Because most girls are used to getting their asses kissed for nothing more than them being a, 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 having, being a female and having a vagina. So when you come in and be like, oh, no, that's not how I operate. Or you got to do this. Or you impress me. It finally, it puts her in a position where she actually wants to be in. She's finally chasing a man's validation for once, and that makes you more attractive. And if it doesn't, fuck her. Find another girl. If you enjoyed this short clip, click over here to watch another short clip. And if you want to watch the entire episode, the entire podcast, click here.